What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial, today I am going to show you how to create a simple grid spawner. It's going to be a very easy video to follow, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is go to the content browser, right click and create a new blueprint class. In this case it's going to be an actor, as this grid spawner will be placed in our level. Let's name this something as vp underscore grid spawner, and let's open this up. So. For components wise, we are not gonna be adding really anything and we're gonna directly into the event graph. We're gonna implement the code. So let's go ahead and right click, create a new custom event and this will be basically a spawn, uh, whatever it is, right? Uh, in this case, let's just name it generic as spawn. And on here, what we need to do is basically a for loop, okay? So we will do something repeatedly an X amount of times. So if I go here and search for for loop, we can get a for loop, not a for each loop. That's different. That's for an arrays. We are looking for just for loop where we can set a first index and last index. In this case, the first index will be one and the last one 10. Now, the last one, of course, is the amount of uh, rows that you want to have. And then in the next one, it will be the amount of columns that we will need to, uh, to have in our grid, right? So we do 10 and 10. Well, you imagine how much that is. So let's go and just leave that on 10 for now. Of course, you can then play with that. And then for the loop body, what we want to do is basically do a line trace by channel. And why are we doing a line trace by channel? Well, first of all, a line trace is basically an invisible right cast from one point to another. And in this case, it will be from the grid spawner position downwards that way we can basically find the surface at which we need to spawn for example if it's here if it's here or here right the height in this case so with that said now what i want to do is basically get the actor location right and then right click and split it so why are we splitting this well that's because we need to basically move along the x axis each time and that's why we also can use the index of the for loop so you know the first time it will be the first index then when we're spawning the second enemy in the row we will have it at two and then three is one so there's a really cool calculation that we can do which is as simple as just getting things uh, multiplying by a value which will be the separation for example let's put 10 for now right and then what i can do is basically add a basically add node over here and to get the return value x and plug it into this add so each time we will basically get the current actor x location plus whatever index with this spacing multiplier added and that's it now with that said what i want to do is basically get this and do a make vector node and this will basically go and join everything together to make a vector as you can see and this will be our start point and of course the y and z will stay untouched so it will go back to start and now for the end point what i want to do is to basically get the current actor rotation and then simply from here get the up vector now there's no down vector so we need to get this up vector and then multiply it by a negative value so let's right click convert it to a uh, float sorry into your note float it's gonna be better for decimal sense one and this will be negative minus uh around 5000 okay so we will have uh, a lot of um you know mm, uh, distance to allow the rate to go downwards just in case we are in a very tall or high place and then we just need to add these two vectors together to get the direction that will be the end point and there we go so if i set this for duration you will actually see the lines being started now of course we need to go and call spawn at the begin place so let me go ahead and call spawn and this will be this custom event and that's it so now if i drag in this grid spawner move it up of course remember to move it up because we need some space for our right cast to go down and i press play you can see that we have there we go the 10 line traces done with this uh, spacing now maybe you know we can increase this a bit so instead of 10 maybe we can go to around 30 something like that and now you can see that we have 30 right cast over here so we can play around with that. Let's put, for example, 20, and then this value is the spacing. So maybe if I increase this to 50, you can see now there will be more spacing between each other, as you can see, right? So, you know, we can play around with the values a bit later, but you can see that right now, if I press Alt S2, we can see 
that there's a first row being created now of course we need to do the same thing but for the columns right so what i want to do is go over here and do a sequence and we are doing this right at the end of the first or on basically on each uh index right because this will create all of the rows and then for each row we want to create a column you know and that's how we create a grid because if not we do this separately we will only create basically uh, kind of two lines like this but we need to fill in all the other space so we do it on each row we can basically create a column so Basically, what I want to do is pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to go and copy the whole block, except the sequence and, of course, the spawn. Paste it down once over here. Put it around there. And in the first sequence ping, I'm going to go ahead and plug in this for loop. And the sequence node will allow us to do other things later on. But let's go back here. Now, in this case, what I want to do is, again, leave this uh, the same. So, you know, we will create an actual grid. And then what I want to do is change the x-axis to be the y-axis. Why? Well, as simple as is that we need to go into the, the other direction, right? So I just want to unplug here the x, unplug the y, plug here the y, and then here unplug the x, plug the y, and here x will go to x. And then with that said, it should be it. So now if I compile and press save, you can see that we are having another row over here uh let's say another column right of our grids with the same spacing and everything good so now what we need to do on here is basically make sure that of course it will uh go into all the other uh into the middle and, and so on right all, all those little stuff so how are we gonna change this well by simply unplugging on the column one the x over here and directly getting the, um, the the location of that row and now if we get that location of that row we can do the columns for each one as you can see and now we have successfully created a grid over here <laughs> which looks very very interesting as you can see and in each point an object will be created we can choose what object it will be in a second and now, of course, the only thing left is to, of course, go and spawn the actual actors. So I'm going to go into the sequencer. Sorry, sequence. And you can see that I created a sequence. So we can, first of all, do the other columns and then do all the logic. So I want to get the return value of this and make a branch. So if we have successfully collabed with something, I'm going to get the break here result, get the location, and basically spawn an actor from class, right? A blueprint. So I'm gonna split the transform, plug the location, and then put always spawn and ignore collisions just in case there's some collisions and it doesn't allow us to, to do that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the third person character blueprint just to spawn to test, all right? And now with that said, I'm gonna basically copy these three nodes, go down, paste them here, and just uh, plug hit over here, return value here and that's it and now with that i can press play maybe it crashes but <laughs> i have a bunch of different um how do we say the scout dimensions being applied now one thing that i want to also uh, change is that of course they were a bit underground so what we can do is add uh, some height into this one so how can we do this well we can simply just get the location and add just overall 100 units in this axis which will be upwards and that's it i can copy paste this node put this here and boom now they're actually going ahead and uh, on the ground and you can see that we have created all this <laughs> grid of actors right which they are you know taking on the surface which is really cool now i'm gonna go and just for performance reasons create a simple actor which will be for example just called character and then i'm here gonna add the scale to mesh and this will be many right simple with a simple um idle animation right if my engine doesn't crash there we go and then i'm gonna rotate this and minus 90 degrees and then make sure in class defaults that start uh, with tick enabled and is disabled so it will be 
not ticking all the time. And then on the grid spawner, I'm gonna plug in the BP character on both. We could create a variable, so we will change only one place, but that's okay. And now it is way more performant. And you can see that now it's actually flying, and that's because um, it is having this offset. So if I now get the offset out, uh, we will actually have these actors correctly placed on the ground. Um, we'll get enabled to physics, but that will be a crazy thing. And as you can see, we have this whole bunch of actors being created, which is really cool and great. So that's it, guys. If you found this tutorial helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel. Remember, I have full access to the product file through Patreon or YouTube members. Link in the description. Join my Discord server to follow me and to the devs. Follow me on socials. And now, yes, that's all I said. Bye bye.